from your kind of background, it's impossible to rise again. You are rising again. In today's service, we'll be looking at Holy Spirit and your mind, part one. Holy Spirit and your mind. But the subtopic is creativity and mind renewal. Creativity and what? Mind renewal. Holy Spirit and what? Your mind. God has a mind and that's why he thinks. In Romans chapter 11 and verse 34, it said, who had known the mind of the Lord and who had been his counselor? Jesus also has a mind. First Corinthians chapter 2 verse 16. Who had known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. The Holy Spirit also has his mind. Romans 8, 27. And it has such a has no word what is in the mind of what? The spirit. Because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now God created you and I to have his kind of mind. Mind is one of the greatest gifts of God to men. As children of God, we have been given sound mind in 2 Timothy 1.7. He said, for God has not given us, so it's a gift already in you. But as something is given to you, does not mean you know how to use it. Every child of God has a gift of sound mind, but are you utilizing? They can give me a car, and if I don't know how to drive it, the car is useless. Is that clear, sir? That they gave me a car, and I don't know how to drive, of what use is the car? I'll see entire transport, except I'm at the mercy of whoever knows how to drive it. Every child of God has a gift of sound mind, but very few are utilizing that mind. And I pray you be amongst those who utilize their mind. <laughs> For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So it is already in you. To be useful on the earth, your mind has a role to play. Redemption made us partakers of the mind of Christ, from where we read in 1 Corinthians 2.16. The mind of Christ is the anointed mind because Christ means the anointed one. And if you have the anointed mind, then the world should also mind you. Why the mind is so important? Do you know a physically handicapped man will be counted in census? But a mad man is not counted. He has all the features complete, but his mind is off. They don't count mad people in any census in any country. Yet he has everything but because of his mind. So when your mind is not put to use, you are not counted in life. Because he has a dysfunctional mind. So even the people who take a census don't count mad people. Yet they count a man on a wheelchair. There was a man called Roosevelt who became a president on a wheelchair of America. Your prosperity and success in life, they are determined by how much you put your mind to use. I wish above all things that I may as prosper and be held, even as your soul prospered. The soul is made up of the will, emotions, and the mind. So the, how your mind prospers, that means how you prosper and succeed in life. And I pray someone will utilize your mind to make the best out of life. Yeah. It is God's desire that you and I prosper. Live a healthy life, but that cannot be actualized, except we engage our mind productively. Mind is in the compartment of the soul. Our mind is so important to God that God made a statement in Philemon chapter 1 verse 14. He said, but without that mind would I do nothing. That means if your mind is not useful, God said I can do nothing. With the mind we receive, we analyze and we store information. Do you know reasoning and, or thinking is an activity of the mind? And God wants us to reason with him. God never said anywhere in the Bible, come, let us pray together. To tell you how prayer is not important so much to God. You pray for him to answer. But he said, come, let us reason 
together. He said, yes, you pray. I will answer you. But I'm not going to sit down to do that with you. I'll just answer your call. But when it comes to reasoning, come, I'll do it with you. Shout hallelujah. And I can tell you, people don't reason at all. They don't what? Reason. That's Isaiah 118. Prayer is important. Don't misquote me, please. But God will never sit down to pray with you. But he said, let us what? He said, you're in my class. You have my kind of mind. So reason like me. He said, come now, let us reason together. See the Lord. Now, in spite of this inestimable value of the mind, most Christians are concerned all of the spirit and the body. They don't develop their mind. They develop their spirit. We fast a lot. We take time to develop our spirit, which is very good. We rub good cream. We, rub, we wear good perfumes to keep our body strong. But only very few people develop their minds. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 23, you see that man is straight dimensional. He's a spirit. He has a soul and dwells in the body. He said, and the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Many are heavily cautious and utterly useless. You have to be heavily cautious and be utterly what? Useful. The defining difference between a mediocre and a celebrity is the mind. To move from the position of mediocrity to becoming a celebrity is a function of the mind. To move from failure to success, poverty to prosperity is the mind. And the wise man said, wealth is a function of man's capacity to think. Now, do you know there are three sets of people on the earth? The, the poor, the rich, and the wealthy. I repeat, there are three sets of people where? The poor, the rich, and the wealthy. The poor always talk about money. If you hear anybody talking about money, money is a poor man. The rich talk about things. The wealthy talk about ideas. And ideas rule the world. When you want to know a poor man, every time they talk, which if we have money, if I have money, if you hear a man say, if I have money, I have money, he's a poor man. The rich talk about things. You know, if I can buy a car, if I can build houses, if I can get an estate, that's rich. But the wealthy, Talk about how they can create ideas. The ideas is what brings the money. Are you getting what I'm saying? Those with ideas don't talk about money. Money look for them. The wealthiest people in the world only are men of ideas. Steve Jobs, who is late now, when he was alive, was the first person to bring the iPad. When he came with the iPad, nobody accepted the iPad. It was not acceptable. Even his company people said, no, 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 this is not acceptable. Only, but then it was only a phone and laptops with text desktop. So when he came with something, they said, no, 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 this guy. He said, no, go ahead with it. And that was what blew Apple. Everybody has now a tablet with him. Phone has been existing since. An idea brought the money. He never talked about money. He talked about what? Ideas. Miss young people from today, stop talking about money and start talking about ideas. Shout a better amen. I say, ideas rule the world. How to develop your mind? How to what? If the mind is that useful, how do I develop it? How do I what? Develop my mind. Shout hallelujah. Do you know when you want to Talk about the mind is more rigorous work. <laughs> How do I develop what? My mind. To develop your mind does not just happen. It is made to happen by conscious personal effort. You must accept responsibility to do what is required to develop your mind. You have been given a sound mind, but you develop it. You do what? That is a gift does not mean it will develop itself. You have to develop your mind. So how do I develop what? My mind. How many want to develop their minds? If they give you money and you don't develop your mind, you'll still be broke. (laughs) 
And if you don't have money, you develop your mind, you'll be rich. I have they not given you millions and you did nothing with them? You know the reason? The mind is not developed. That somebody gives you money does not mean you'll be rich. Or you'll be wealthy. Is that clear, sir? How to do what? How to develop your mind, number one. Constantly upgrade your mind through knowledge. Constantly upgrade your mind through what? Through knowledge. Just like the human body is developed constantly by eating and physical exercise you engage in. You know, if you eat well and you do some work, your body will be, you see some muscles in your biceps, you see your body building. Is that true? The spirit is developed through knowledge and practice of the word. We develop the spirit through knowledge of the word and the practice of what? The word. As 20 verse 22. Now I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to what? Build you up and to give you inheritance among them which are sanctified. First Peter 2.2. 2. You develop the spirit through what? And as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the world that you may grow thereby. In like manner, our mind is developed through knowledge. Through what? Knowledge. When you know better, you live better. When you know what others don't know, you'll be the head. And to be the head, something must be in your head. The defining difference between the developed nations and the developing nations is just advanced mental development. And to develop your mind, you must intentionally and constantly upgrade your mind with knowledge. You must acquire knowledge on a constant basis. You must be on a mission. When I hear this, when you fail to upgrade your mind with new information, your mind will soon be obsolete and outdated. Stay tuned. David Ibiumi will be right back. Follow David Ibiumi online for daily prophecies and wisdom quotes for living. Via Instagram at David underscore Ibiumi. Twitter at David Ibiumi. Facebook at David Ibiumi. You can also listen and subscribe to the David Ibiumi podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Anchor FM, Google Podcasts, and much more. God bless you. Welcome to Our Salvation with David Ibiumi. Never stop learning new things. To stop learning new things is to start dying. Old mind is not a function of age, but a function of lack of mental update. Do you know mental exercise is more rigorous than physical exercise? Every time you stretch your mind, you are tired and hungry. Do you know? Check when you're preparing for exams, you get very hungry. Thinking is a work, if you think it's not a work. That's why they pay the manager more than the laborer. Feed your mind with quality information, knowledge. Nothing changes until your mind changes. Your life will remain on the same spot until you upgrade your mind. If you want your life to go forward, then your mind has to be upgraded with knowledge. So here. Is that clear, sir? I want a change in my life. Change the way you think. The difference between a low performer and an excellent performer is knowledge. Is what? Be a voracious reader. The difference between Apostle Paul and other apostles is knowledge. Is what? Knowledge. He could accomplish more because of his depth. Of reasoning. Apostle Paul mental capacity 
to present the gospel was astonishing. He was a love of knowledge. He was a man of books. He was spiritually sound and mentally smarter than others. He had what even Peter had to say about him to tell you how Paul was in the class. Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 3, 15 to 16, Peter writing says something. He said, this man Paul is not like us. He said, an account that the long suffering of our Lord Savior, listen, even our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, had written unto you, 16, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood. He said, some things he was talking, they are too high for ordinary people, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scripture unto their own destruction. He said, this guy is in a different class. It's not in our class. That Peter acknowledged Paul. Are you getting what I'm saying? May someone make reference to you after now. Yeah. Shout a better amen. Yeah. Hear what Paul stole Timothy, the same Paul. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. The cloak that left at us with Kapos, when thou comest, bring with thee and the books, but especially the parchments. Bring my notes. When we are coming from Lagos to Port Harcourt, I never carried any clothes. I didn't bother about the clothes when they were carrying them. I said, my books are the most important things. The only thing I supervised to personally look was my books. Because I can't use the books to buy clothes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In 1 Timothy 4 verse 13, it said, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exaltation, to doctrine. It said, give attention to what? Reading. We don't read today. We think it's money, 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 money. Listen, going after money is a sign of poverty. It's a sign of what? Poverty. 2 Timothy 2 15. Study to show yourself approved a workman and then not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of what? Truth. With all humility, and I'm an adept lover of knowledge. I invest more in knowledge than anything else. When people are busy shopping for clothes, I look for books to buy. I can buy clothes for people, buy anything for anybody, but what me I'm interested is books. Years ago, I acquired a business encyclopedia with hundreds of thousands of naira. Someone may ask, what is the pastor got to do with the business encyclopedia? I've spent millions to acquire knowledge on speed reading. I had to travel all the way from Nigeria to the United Kingdom, paid millions. The best in the world taught me speed reading. He is the best in the world. He taught me speed reading. I had to pay executive class that run to millions. Executive class, only me. And that runs, so you can't take the best in that area to teach you. He will, he will close down a conference room in the hotel to make sure you are taught. I didn't mind the millions I spent. I wanted knowledge. I wanted what? Because I don't want to be stockpiling books without reading them. Books were getting more and more and more and more. And if I read that the way they were taught in school, I can never finish them. So I had to go and look at how. One day I was going with a man of God, Mike Mudok, and he took my book. We were in the car between airport and his hotel room in Port Harcourt. He just took my book. He did like this. Me, I'm a keen learner. He flipped through my book and he summarized the book between airport and hotel. I didn't ask him questions, no. I don't ask questions like that. I said, he just went to, he said, this book is rich. He went to flip like the frap, 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 turn. Before we got to the hotel, he summarized the book. I said, no, there's something this man knows I don't know. So I began to investigate and I discovered that he's speed reading. So I said, okay. Me too. Let me go for it. And I paid a big price to go for it. In every endeavor, including ministry, your result is determined by how much, you, how much better you know than others. How much you invest in your mind determines the dividend you enjoy in life. I have one of the richest libraries in this part of the world. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Richest what? 
in this part of the world. I want to reach it. My library is rich. I'm a pastor. I have business books. I have books on world affairs. Stop playing with your destiny and start investing in your mind. Stop what? And start investing in your mind. When your life is stagnated, it shows your mind is also stagnated. So upgrade your mind to upgrade your life. Allowing your mind to lie dormant without reading will make you a dummy. Many have never read any book since they left school. Reading makes you to be informed. If you want to know you're a reader, let's say you know, you will always have something to talk when people are talking with you. When you are not a reader, you will not have anything to talk. You keep talking the same thing. How you want to know a reader is at every conversation, you have something new to put in. And when people are talking, you have something to contribute. By the time they are talking, you are talking about land. Land. How you sell land. It shows your mind is not worth upgraded. When your mind is upgraded, you always have something new to share. So here. Because reading makes you to be informed. Reading makes you to be what? Napoleon Hill said, and I quote him, more gold has been mined from the tons of men than has ever been taken from the earth. Unquote. So your mind gold is through your thoughts. You mine gold from what? And you lose gold through your thoughts. Great thinkers are always on demand. They're always on what? Demand. They don't lack opportunity, they create opportunities. Young boys, invest in your mind. Young ladies, stop. I was reading a book of a great woman of God while preparing for this message, and I take the quote from her, a wise woman. Young guests, stop investing more in your hair and start investing in your head. This quote is from scriptures, and then I will quote exactly what she said. In Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 22, the message translation, look at it. Shall we read together? One to go. It said, like a gold ring in a pig's mouth is a beautiful face on an empty head. And I quote Ann Smith, this Ann Smith, this I quote. It's a woman that invests in her hair more than she invests in her mind is a pretty foolish woman, unquote. She, and in her book I also read, a woman who invests more in high heel shoes than books looks tall but lacks height in high intelligent, unquote. When your head is empty, your beautiful face is useless. Please, young people, invest in your mind. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Invest what? In your mind. Don't buy clothes, buy books. Improve, listen to messages. Do courses that will move you offered and then all the things you're looking for begin to look for you. Are you getting me? We live in a world that is dysfunctional. Where people don't know what they want, so they're, in, they're always in want. They don't really know what they want, so they're always what? Want. I want this one. I want it. No. Sit down and invest on your mind. You to make all the changes. most prized possession. Your worth to him is incomparable. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not the sin, not the pain, not your shame. Jesus says, All that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will no wise cast out. John chapter 6 verse 37. 
God is waiting for you with open arms. Come to him as you are. He will give you life, freedom, peace, transformation. Wherever you are, pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the dead to save me. Now with my mouth, I declare you Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name. They worship together regularly at the temple each day. Met in small groups in homes for communion and shared meals with great joy and thankfulness. Acts 2, 4-6 In your daily pursuit of a fulfilling life, you need the support of a spiritual family. A heaven where you can enjoy spiritual comfort. A brook where you can be refreshed with God's word. And a military backup for fellow soldiers in Christ. Enjoy these and much more in the Cell Fellowship designed as a close-knit setting for your personal revival, growth, and blessings. It exists in three structures, the Home Cell Fellowship, which is suited for everyone, the Corporate Cell Fellowship, which is convenient for corporate offices and organizations, and the Unique Cell Fellowship, which is made for students. No matter your preference, there is a place for you. Locate the nearest Cell Fellowship Center to you and begin reaping the benefits today. Follow David Ibiomi online for daily prophecies and wisdom quotes for living via Instagram at David underscore Ibiomi, Twitter at David Ibiomi, Facebook at David Ibiomi. You can also listen and subscribe to the David Ibiomi podcast on Apple Podcast, Spotify, Anchor FM, Google Podcast, and much more. God bless you. My God, my God, supply all your needs. Like David Ibiomir to receive daily prayers and prophecies live on Facebook. Like and follow only David Ibiomir's official verified account. Remember, always look out for the verified icon. Join us next time on Hour of Salvation with David Ibiomir. This message was brought to you by Salvation Ministries, home of success.